The US-led coalition fighting the Islamic State group has admitted that at least 250 IS fighters were allowed to escape from the Syrian city of Raqqa just before it fell. That's our top story, and it's a BBC exclusive. The BBC has uncovered details of a secret deal that let several hundred IS fighters and their families escape from Raqqa, the Syrian city, that IS made the capital of his self-declared caliphate. In exchange for freeing hostages used as human shields, a convoy which stretched for miles was able to leave the city freely. The departure was watched by US and British-led coalition forces and Kurdish fighters who are now in control of the city. Despite reassurances, dozens of foreign IS fighters escaped as well. The convoy included tons of weapons and ammunition. Some of those who left, including IS's most notorious criminals, have spread out across Syria and even making it as far as Turkey. Some have been captured, but hundreds more have vanished. The streets of Raqqa are lonely and broken. The city is a wreck. Booby traps and mines lie everywhere. It's too dangerous to let most people inside, but we went in to try and pick up a trail through the debris to find out what happened to the IS fighters who vowed to die fighting here, but instead escaped with their families in their thousands. I see you! A British fighter with the Syrian Democratic Forces calls out to IS. They're leaving on a convoy of buses on Raqqa's last day of fighting a month ago. Look at them running like cowards, like dogs. From his firing position, he can see IS taking photos as they board their buses to freedom. The convoy left from here, the city hospital, they've been holed up inside for months. On it were IS fighters, their families and their hostages. But we're told their mood wasn't dejected, it wasn't defeated. They were defiant. It was here that they realised that they might live to fight another day. The deal to get them out of here is the deal that no one wants to talk about. It's Raqqa's dirty secret. So did Kurds, Arabs and the Western Coalition get together and agree a deal that not only allowed IS to escape from Raqqa, but also allowed its fiercest fighters to roam far and wide from the confines of this city. We wanted to track down the route. How many were there? It was claimed only a few dozen left. Where did they go? Why did no one stop them? After days of searching, we picked up the trail at a truck stop on the outskirts of Tabka, a town on the banks of the Euphrates. Here we found the drivers, all civilians, who drove IS to safety. They were hired by the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces. It was the longest journey of their lives. We were scared since the moment we entered Raqqa. As soon as we entered, we saw IS fighters with their weapons and suicide belts on. If something goes wrong in the deal, they would bomb the entire convoy. The Islamic State's retreat was not to be televised, but despite a media blackout, we got hold of some amateur footage of the convoy. It stretched for miles. We were 47 trucks and 13 buses and IS militants took their own vehicles as well. Our convoy was 6 to 7 kilometers long. We took out around 4,000 people, including women and children. Tell me about the foreigners that were on the trucks. Where were they from? Foreigners that could be here. Uh... France, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Pakistan, Yemen, Saudi, China, Tunisia, Egypt. There was a huge number of foreigners. This wasn't meant to look like a proud exodus. So IS were told no banners, no flags while leaving. They were supposed to be banned from taking anything other than personal weapons. Instead, 10 trucks were loaded to the top with guns and ammunition. When the convoy made it to the village of Shanina, they stopped at Ali al assads shop. We were at the shop here, and an SDF vehicle stopped by to say there was a truce agreement between them and IS. They wanted us to clear the area, and as soon as we did so, an IS convoy came passing through. There were about 4,000 people leaving Raqqa on that road here. 
It took him about two to three hours. It was bumper to bumper. Well, the coalition of the air, US aircraft overhead, but doing nothing, the convoy drove on to more isolated territory. Here they left the main road, in the middle of the desert. Mohammed watched as they took a dirt trail and vanished. There are some French brothers from our group who left for France to carry out attacks in what would be called a day of reckoning. The war against IS has a twin purpose. First, to destroy the so-called Caliphate by retaking territory. And secondly, to prevent terror attacks in the world beyond Syria and Iraq. Raqqa was IS's capital, but it was also a cage. The fighters there were trapped. But it has also meant that battle-hardened militants have spread far and wide across and beyond Syria. And many of them aren't done fighting yet. After the fall of Raqqa, business.